Hi guys, you are welcome to the 30th agriculture and trade show in Jinja, the adventure capital of East Africa. Uh, the theme of this year's show is innovating pathways to farm business led agro industrialization. Uh, now, farmers normally face a lot of challenges when they are growing their crops and uh, rearing their animals. So, I want to highlight to you some of the ways uh, you can use. Uh, by getting insights from this uh, agricultural show uh, of uh, some sustainable ways of dealing with challenges uh, farmers normally face. Uh, farmers normally face problems like uh, high fertilizer prices, low crop yields, pests and diseases, uh, low soil fertility, soil erosion and many more. So here I bring to you some of the ways they can use to combat some of those challenges. Let's dive in. Now I'm here at a plot of sand hemp, which is a green manure crop. So you can grow it uh, to increase the fertility of your garden. Uh, it has the following benefits. It fixes nitrogen in the soil. It can control weeds in the soil since uh, in the garden, since it grows very fast, you see it's very tall can reach over six feet uh, and it does this in a very short period of time yeah within 60 days uh, it will have reached uh, almost a height of six feet uh, so it can use the control weeds it increases water infiltration uh, and prevents uh, surface runoff because uh, the leaves can slow down the uh, water droplets as it's raining and because of its roots, they go deep, so they can help that water to infiltrate. Uh, because of its deep tap root, yeah, it can also help to break down the hard soil layers uh, below the surface. So it acts like a natural plow. Uh, this sun hemp can also increase the soil organic matter when it decomposes, because after some time, you can terminate it by cutting it down. So you can cut it down and uh, leave it on the surface to decompose uh, when you are practicing uh, conservation agriculture, which uses minimum tillage, uh, such that it can decompose. Uh, the leaves and the shoots, they can de decompose and increase the soil organic matter. Uh, for livestock farmers, you can also harvest it. You can harvest the shoots and the leaves and you feed it to your livestock, like cows, goats, and sheep. I'm here at the narrow stall and the isipe, narrow and isipe stall, uh, where they teach about the push and pull system of controlling pests. Uh, narrow, of course, is the National Agriculture and Research Organization, which handles agricultural research in Uganda, and the isipe is the International Center for Insect Physiology and Ecology. Here, they are teaching us uh, an innovative way of controlling pests in the garden. They have what they call the push and pull system. The pull plant in this case was Bracaria, but uh, napier grass or elephant grass can also be used as the pull plant. On a field scale, you can plant like three rows of uh, blackalia or napier grass along the edges. The push plant uh, in this case was the small jam. The blackalia attracts the insects, which is the pool plant, and the, the small jam pushes the insects, so it's the push plant. The small jam does not smell good for these insects. Uh, which it maize. So it smells bad, so it pushes them away from the maize. Then the blackaria attracts the insects. But blackaria has some, it's very hairy, and it can destroy the uh, early stages of the insect. So when they are pulled, they are killed. 
So this one helps to control the insects uh, without even using any chemicals. So it's very sustainable, innovative, and cheap because you can control these insects without using any chemicals. You see that the maize is looking good, yet they have not sprayed. It's about two weeks, as I can see it, but uh, it looks uh, very healthy with no uh, with no visible effect of armyworm or any other pests. Now let us have the expert about this technology say a word or two about this push and pull system. Thank you so much. Uh, so like uh, my colleague has said, this is a farming system which we think is going to help us to reduce on the usage of chemicals in farming. You know most of us grew up growing maize without uh, spraying them but uh, due to the emergence of some of the pests like fall armyworm people have started growing maize and they spray when a farmer goes to the garden to, to the shop to buy seeds he comes back with a rocket container which we want to avoid so this system like he has explained it's going to help farmers to reduce on usage of chemicals but it also has advantages the grasses that are pushing and pulling they are good pasture grasses for animals so the farmer will benefit from uh, the advantage of getting the pests out of the garden but also have food for his animals. Then the other additional thing, this uh, the desmodium plant, for people who are uh, getting some, uh, striga weed, I, I don't know whether you've seen it but it's common in eastern Uganda, This uh, the desmodium plant also tries to deter or to kill the seeds of this, uh, the, push, uh, the parasitic uh, weed so in the long run, after two to three seasons, you will not have the striga weed affecting you. So this uh, system really has numerous advantages apart from pushing away the pests, but it also has advantages of conserving moisture in the soil and also providing food to your animals during the drought periods. Yeah. Thank you very much uh, for giving us this opportunity to learn about the push and pull system. So even animal farmers are not left out. So if for you, you have animals, you can harvest the, the small jam, which has a lot of protein, since it's a legume, and the blackaria, which has a lot of carbohydrates mixed together, and you feed your animals. So